Welcome to Kingdom Reality, your gateway to deep insights into the truths and realities of God's kingdom. Dive deep into the teachings of esteemed teachers of God's Word as they illuminate the mysteries of Scripture, offering priceless wisdom and revelations. Our channel serves as a beacon of enlightenment, guiding seekers on a transformative journey towards understanding the essence of divine truth and purpose. Join us as we explore the depths of spiritual reality and embark on a quest for genuine understanding and spiritual growth, revealing kingdom realities. In the heart of time, amidst the whispers of eternity, lies a divine library unlike any other the scriptures. Welcome, dear seekers of truth, to a journey through the profound doctrine of the scriptures, from the dawn of creation. The words of the scriptures were not born of private inspiration but were received by holy men of God through divine revelation. The scriptures are not merely the product of human intellect, but the very breath of God breathed into the hearts of those chosen to pen his eternal message. Through the ages, the scriptures have stood as a beacon of light, illuminating the path to righteousness and salvation. Let us delve into the depths of these sacred texts, where every word, every verse, is a testament to the divine wisdom and love of our Creator. As we embrace the doctrine of the Scriptures, may we open our hearts to receive the timeless truths they impart, and may we be transformed by the power of their divine revelation, for in the pages of the Scriptures, we find not just words, but the very essence of God's love and guidance for humanity. Embark on this sacred journey. The Library of God awaits. The Doctrine of Scriptures Let's, let's maximize our 15 minutes. The word Bible is the word Biblio, and it simply means a book. Now, in the Bible, there are writings. Those writings are called scriptures. The word scripture means writings. So there are scriptures in the Bible. In fact, the Bible is actually a library of books and each of the book in the bible has writings called scriptures that's basic every one of us know that 39 old testament books and 27 new testament books forming 66 books in the library called biblio or the book the body of books called Bible. Now when we talk about the doctrine of scriptures, we are actually looking at eight major things. Because these eight things are basically what forms the doctrine of scriptures. I'll give you seven because of our time. I don't want to touch what I can't deal with. Number one, when we are looking at the doctrine of scriptures, we are trying to examine the authorship of the Bible or the inspiration of the Bible. Where does this book come from? Number two, when we are looking at the doctrine of scriptures, we are trying to study the authority of that book. Why does that book have authority and why should we pattern our lives after that book? If you don't know this, you don't know the doctrine of the Bible. The authorship or the inspiration of scriptures, the authority of scriptures. Number three, when we talk about the doctrine of scripture, we are trying to study its inerrancy or infallibility. How accurate is this book? Because it's a risk to pattern your life after a document, a philosophy, or an ideology that is not accurate. Your life too will go in error. So inerrancy or inability to err is the third substance of the doctrine of scripture. Number four, when we look at the doctrine of scripture, we are trying to examine the understandability of Bible. Is it clear enough to be understood? Because at a point, we are going to claim that the Spirit of God is the one that inspired it. So if something comes from the realm of God, which, who is a finite, an infinite being, can finite beings articulate it? How 
understandable is this document? Number five, when we look at the doctrine of scriptures, we are trying to study and understand its scope and sufficiency as a body of truth that can give definition to our lives holistically. Is this document, is the revelation from this document sufficient to deal with every aspect of our lives? Because our life seems to border on diverse things, a plethora of things. Number six, when we look at the doctrine of scripture, we are trying to study its canonicity. How did they come about gathering these books? And why are these books the ones gathered? Are there no other ones? What is the basis for selecting these ones and not selecting those ones? The people who gathered it, didn't they make a mistake? We are trying to examine that. And then finally, when we look at the doctrine of scripture, we are trying to also study how to interpret the document, which is what we call the laws or the principles of biblical interpretations. When you deal with these seven things, to a very large extent, you would have been able to understand the doctrine of scripture. Now, why is the doctrine of scripture so important? It's important for many reasons. Number one, it affirms to you the veracity of that document. Because if you don't believe and you are not convicted, and I'm not talking just religious assent or acceptance. Because if you are a Christian, it's easy to say, yeah, it's the Bible, it's the word of God, I accept it. The day your faith is challenged, you will discover that your conviction is shallow. This is the undoing of many people. They just accepted the Bible without any understanding about it. And they went to an environment where people began to challenge the document and they didn't know what to say. And their convictions began to shake. So it's not enough. We have to study it so that we can ascertain the veracity in order for our convictions to be lasting. Number two, we have to study it so that we can interact with it with the necessary reverence. Because many people carry the Bible, although subconsciously and sublimally, they say, oh, it's the word of God. But they don't relate with it as such. Because they've not taken time to study about the book. So at best, they deal with it as an accurate historical document. Not as the sacred composition of the oracles of God. So we study this so that we can deal and interact with the Bible with the requisite reverence in order to maximize of the things that God has hid there. Number three, why do we need to ascertain this? So that we can open ourselves to be built up by the ideology of the book. Because if you don't really value it, you will not allow it speak to you. And you will not allow it have authority over your life. Have you seen many persons where you tell them, the Bible said, they say, leave that in, leave that one first. This is what our forefathers were doing. Give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar. So they are loyal to the scriptures to the degree that it doesn't contravene the philosophies of their forefathers. But when you study this book, there is a level of understanding that you will have that will make you submit to it completely in order for it to grow you and to disciple you. These are basic reasons why it's important for us to do and to study the doctrine of scripture. And so let's begin taking these seven things one after the other. What I'll deal with here, honestly, is quite basic. Really, really basic. But of course, it's necessary for us to do this. The first thing is inspiration. The inspiration of scripture. There are many heresies about the inspiration of scriptures. Many postulations in time past until theologians came to an agreed position about the inspiration of scripture. And so the first thing I'll deal with under inspiration is to show you how the Bible was inspired. And then the second thing is to give you proofs that the Bible was actually inspired. So on one side, you need to know how they got the message. On another side, you need to have proofs that truly they got the message. It's not just a claim. Because anybody can wake up and claim that a spirit spoke to him. 
But at the end of the day, there are too many discrepancies that make us question whether it was truly inspired. Because a spirit who knows the end from the beginning should not be taken on a worse if it gives you an inspiration. That inspiration should be able to outlive time. Right? So, two things we look at. Now, let's look at how they caught this inspiration. There were many postulations about the inspiration of scriptures and we came to discover their heresy. So, I list them for you before I show you what is theologically accepted. Number one is the natural theory. What is the natural theory? The natural theory postulates that the Bible is a product of human genius or superior knowledge. This is a theory that these men were so wise. So they were able to gather together wise sayings and they communicated something that is a superior knowledge because they had a superior mentality. But of course, the knowledge of man can be flawed by many things. Number one, time can show inconsistencies. Number two, the knowledge of man will not have the power to generate supernatural happenings. When we see people use scriptures and miracles take place, we know that this thing is beyond man. Number three, the knowledge of man cannot transform. It can renew, it can educate, but it will hardly transform. For a murderer to hear something and change to become a saint, there's a power involved. So if time does not defile it, its natural source will make it vulnerable in the front of supernatural challenges. And if it does not fail in supernatural corridors, its inability to genuinely transform men will bring it to question. So this book is not a product of human intelligence. That theory is flawed. And there are many other theories like that. The second theory is the illumination theory. And this theory postulates that the Bible is a product of man's heightened religious perception that when men became too religiously inclined a point came or comes where on the strength of their religiosity and fanatism they begin to have esoteric feelings esoteric apparitions and on the strength of those esoteric experiences they can write things so it's their religious persuasion that made them to write those things it's not necessarily from god but when we study the scriptures even the testimony of scripture defies that because scripture itself proves that god revealed it glory to god so that's a theory there's another theory called the mechanical theory in the mechanical theory uh, it was postulated that God shut down the minds of the people and dictated the Bible for them word for word. So they were operating like typewriters. But when we read the scripture, we see that that is not true. Because when you start studying the Bible, you are going to see that the scripture is influenced by the personalities of the writers. You are going to see that the scripture is influenced by historical backgrounds. You are going to see that scriptures is influenced by the belief system and the ideology of different territories part time. That means the personalities of the people also participated. They were not reduced to typewriters to dictate verbatim what God spoke. Are you following that? Then you have the fourth theory, which is what we call the trans theory. In the trans theory, it was believed that these people had visionary apparitions and they saw it's like the dictating theory also but in this case they didn't hear they saw visions where they wrote what they saw word for word are you following but of course the very reason i gave for the mechanical theory also flaws this theory the fifth theory is the theory of partial inspiration and this theory postulates that only part of the bible is inspired the bible is not completely the word of god and why do they postulate this theory they say even satan spoke in the bible men who didn't know god spoke in the bible so we cannot claim that the bible is a, is the complete word of god but you see when we talk about inspiration of scriptures we are not just saying the things god said we are also saying 
the things God allowed to be written by reason of his authority. Now, this room where we are now, listen this, everybody who entered this room, entered this room on the strength of the authority of EJMI. So, the moment you came here, you came under the government of what we are doing here. You can't come here now and start dancing. While I'm talking here, you start jumping and dancing. No. Even if you come here with your own agenda, so long as you are here now, you will come under the government of our operation. So even the things the devil said, it was God who allowed it to be included in the Bible because he had a purpose in God's agenda. So although God was not the one who said it, but God was the one who allowed it to be part of the document. So at that point, the things the devil was saying, has an impact in God's agenda. So it becomes something under God's authority and allowance. Same with the things men said. So when we are dealing with the story of inspiration, we are dealing with the fact, not just the fact that God alone was the one who spoke, we are dealing with the fact that everything captured there is consistent with the will of God. In that God was the one who allowed them to capture it and to document it because he has a place in God's corporate agenda. So the things the devil said are not words spoken by God, but God was the one who inspired it to be captured in scripture. On the strength of that, the agenda of God has something to do with it. So it comes under the government of God's will. That is why it is part of scripture. Are you following this? Number four, which number six rather, the last theory is the thought theory. The thought theory insists that God gave them the thoughts and they wrote it the way they wanted. But this theory cannot be consistent because man fluctuates. So what if you are writing when you are happy? You got tired. You came back when you were sad. You, and you, you got tired. You came back when you were betrayed. The book will not have coherence. <laughs> so God can't take the risk of just giving them the thoughts and say write it the way you want. That can be a textbook. Paul had parchments. They were not scriptures. There was a difference between Paul's parchments and the scriptures that Paul wrote. Paul said to one of his disciples to come with his parchment when he's coming. So he knew the difference between parchment and scriptures. Parchments are his thoughts. Scriptures are the word that God gave him. So what is the theory of biblical inspiration? The theory of biblical inspiration is called the Weber plenary theory. The Weber plenary theory. What does this mean? This theory simply postulates that the things that were written in scriptures, it was given by God to the writers through words. And this, these things that were given to the writers through words followed three governments or three protocols number one revelation number two inspiration and number three illumination and i explain to you how these three things happen the verbal plenary theory postulate that what the things written in scriptures were given by god through words and they followed the principle of revelation illumination and inspiration now according to this theory what is revelation revelation is god imparting the truth that he wanted them to communicate into their heart it's like god photographed what he wanted them to say into their heart so that the things that were the thoughts of God became their thoughts. It descended like a download into them. That's revelation. It is divine impartation of knowledge. Then you have inspiration. What is inspiration? According to this theory. Inspiration, according to this theory, is God guiding their souls to be able to receive completely everything
everything he has imparted. You know there are certain things that can come into your mind, but your mind can't receive them. That's why you have subconscious memory, you have conscious memory. So on one part, God imparted the revelation or the truth, which is revelation. Then God now guided their souls to be able to pick what he gave them completely. Not to be contaminated by their own deficiencies. So I can be angry, but God imparts a word of joy in my spirit. God now guides my soul to receive everything he says about joy and he also prevents my soul from allowing my anger contaminate what he said about joy. So I can be angry yet I'm writing about joy. So the joy that I am feeling while I'm writing is a spiritual joy. It's not something that is happening because of my circumstances. So divinely God imparts the word and divinely God coordinates and controls your soul to pick everything he has imparted and only the things he has imparted and then you have illumination illumination is god elevating your soul to a frequency where you interact with him and him only so when the people were inspired they received what was in the heart of god their soul was guided to receive only what god deposited and their soul was also elevated to interact with only God at the time when they were receiving it. In, in, in a normal human context, let me give you an instance of what happens. As you are seated now, imagine that you've not seen the president before and suddenly the president calls you. You know that while you are standing before him, all your attention will be arrested momentarily. Have you, have you had that experience before? When you are standing before somebody, you reverse so much. A point, you will literally be arrested. All your attention will be glued to him. But what is happening here is superior. So in Revelation, God downloaded. So God stepped down his truth into their hearts. In inspiration, God guided their soul to receive only the download. And in illumination, God hijacked them up so that they go beyond their human limitations and they receive only what is divinely inspired so at the time when they receive the scripture everything god downloaded their soul was able to articulate them and only those things were their souls interacting with at that time this is how scriptures were inspired so when the bible speaks about the scriptures being inspired it's talking about three things happening at the same time revelation illumination and inspiration revelation is god imparting knowledge inspiration is god controlling the soul to receive everything and only the things he imparted and illumination is god upgrading the soul of the one receiving so that they can be able to interact with god at that level this is the technology by which the scriptures were received and if you study the bible you will find it Second Peter 1 verse 20 he said knowing this first no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation next verse 21 he said prophecy came not in old time by the will of man are you seeing what's happening here God hijacked them beyond the frequency of their soul so they were not operating at the level of their soul this is what illumination he jacked them up to a higher realm and ascended realm. So they were operating beyond their will. They were operating beyond their mind. They were operating beyond their emotion. There was an upgrade. He said, prophecy came not. Now, what does it mean came? That's revelation. God sent it, imparted it. He sent the truth to their realm and then he hijacked their soul up. It's just like meeting at some point where God steps down from his realm and steps you up from your realm so that there's a convergence point a point where corruption can't exist so prophecy came which is revelation holy men did not speak at their level of their will they ascended beyond their emotion he now added something he said but holy men of god spake as they were moved this is inspiration they were guided so three things are happening here prophecy came revelation 
Men didn't speak according to their will, illumination. They were guided inspiration. This is how God was able to achieve perfection in transmitting his word. He said prophecy did not come in old time by the will of man. Holy men of God spake as they were moved by the spirit of God. He sent it. Men were as elevated to catch it and their souls were guided to receive it without contamination. And this is what happened with every scripture including what Satan said. God trapped it, sent it to their soul and they caught it. Ask yourself the question, were they there when Satan was talking? So who told them what Satan said? It was not Satan that told them. It was God who sent what Satan said to them. Hear what the devil is saying. Upgraded them to receive it so that they can articulate it for a generation to learn. So Romans 15 4 said, the things that were written aforetime, they were written for our learning so that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. There is so much we learn from the errors of Satan. In fact, the errors of Satan can build faith in your heart. He said, if the princes of this world had known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. He makes you know that they said the devil is. So God was deliberate about what he was doing. Are you following this? So this is the theory of the inspiration of the word of God. If anybody tells you that the word of God is filled with error, bring him here. Let him understand 2 Peter 1, 20 and 21. Revelation was sent from the realm of God. The souls of men were illuminated, upgraded beyond their will, beyond their emotion, beyond their human limitation. So they, they, didn't, they didn't let go of their humanity, but they went beyond their human limitation. So emotions can still be there, but emotion can't interfere. The mind can still be there, the mind can't interfere. The will can be there, the will can't interfere. That's why the Bible speaking in 1 Peter 1 9. He said the things they prophesied, they didn't know what it meant. So they were upgraded beyond their mind. They were writing things beyond their learning. So that their minds, their emotions, and their will can't corrupt it. Although the mind, emotion, will is still there, but operating beyond it. And then they were carried. That means the soul was guided. God made sure he protected the boundary of the soul so that nothing can infiltrate it. So when the scriptures were isolated, everything was captured exactly how it was in the heart of God. Are you following this? This is the principle of inspiration. And this is what applies to every scripture. 2 Timothy 3.16 It said every scripture is given by the inspiration of God. Not some scripture. Every scripture. It's important to know this. You know, the world has become a smaller community because of internet. You may be here and you say, well, why are we doing this? Some of us interact with the Western world now than we interact with our world here. Because of internet. So that you don't see things and you begin to wonder what's going on. This is why truths like this are important. And it will amaze you that even pastors have not taken time to study these things. It will amaze you. You need to know how your scriptures came. They came from God. This is not a product of human intelligence. And these things are not corrupted because men received them. There was a way God prepared the men who received them. Holy men were carried by the Spirit of God. Mind controlled to receive everything and only what God gave. This is the first aspect. What are the proofs of inspiration? I give you five of them quickly. Number one. Number one proof of inspiration is the testimony of scripture. Scripture itself testifies for itself that it was inspired. And I quoted one for you already. 2 Timothy 3.16. He said every scripture is given by the inspiration of God. That's scripture, talking scripture. Every scripture is given. So that's the first proof of inspiration. Second proof proof of inspiration is the testimony of the authors. I quoted already 2 Peter 1 verse 20 and 22. This was Peter talking. In verse 16 he said we have a more sure word of prophecy. What is that sure word of prophecy? The scripture. And Peter came to say this. He said knowing this first 
no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. Holy men of God spoke as they were moved. So these are those who wrote talking. This is Peter talking. When I wrote the Bible, I was moved. I was carried. I wasn't writing because I was intelligent. The force of God controlled my mind, elevated my mind, and I received the download. That was how I came about this. This is not because I'm experienced. This is not because I'm smart. This is not because I'm intelligent. I was carried. So the one who wrote it, the one who was used to communicate it, is giving you the testimony. Paul spoke in Galatians chapter 1 verse 12. He said, the gospel that I preached, I wasn't taught of a man. He said, for I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. That's the testimony of another author. I wrote these things by the revelation of Jesus Christ. And these people knew. Peter was now talking about what Paul wrote. Because if they spoke about themselves only, you will assume that, oh, maybe it's for themselves. How about others? Peter was now talking about Paul. In 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 16, hear what Peter said. He said, go to verse 15. An account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation. Even our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given to him, given unto him that he has written unto you. So the, the wisdom by which he wrote it was not his own. It was God who imparted it. Now go to verse 16. He said, as also in all his epistles this is peter now validating paul's writing speaking in them of these things in which are some things hard to be understood which they that are unlearned and unstable wrestle as they do other scriptures unto their own destruction you see what peter is saying here peter is calling the writings of paul scripture and peter said paul wrote it by the wisdom that god gave him so even Paul wrote by the revelation of God, corroborating what Paul said in Galatians 1.12. And Peter is saying, there are some people who want to use their brain to operate in this corridor. He said, they now begin to twist it. Because this thing we are talking about here is superior to human knowledge. Every scripture came from God. Nobody wrote it because he's smart. Mark may, read, may have written, Peter may have written, Paul may have written. And for the purpose of understanding who wrote what, they can say the epistles of Paul. But the epistles of Paul are not Paul's, Paul's message. They are not Paul's revelation. They are the revelations of God given through Paul. The epistles of Peter are not the revelations of Peter. They are the revelations God gave through Peter. That is why Peter said what Paul said is also scripture like the one I said like the one the prophets of old said to let you know the proof that scriptures are inspired and these things are important you need to meditate on them so that you can not just know them and have conviction but the day there is a need you should be able to raise a defense that what you are reading is not a history book it's not human intelligence god gave it and if they ask you how did god give it you can explain it he sent it as a revelation. He upgraded the minds of those who received it by illumination. And he guided their soul to receive everything and receive it how he sent it by inspiration. So there was download, there was upgrade, and there was guidance of soul. This is the three principles that coupled the scripture from the mind of God to the mind of man and to the Torah that we read today as our holy writ. Glory to God. Second proof of inspiration is what? testimony of the authors third proof of inspiration are fulfilled prophecies everything they said has come to pass the ones that have not come to pass are the ones they say will come to pass in the future only the messianic prophecies alone are more than 500 and no one has failed that level of precision and this is something that has spanned many generations that level of precision cannot be human intelligence. You read your Bible, you see Old Testament prophecies fulfilled, and then Jesus came, and the ones he said, and the ones the apostles said, are being fulfilled every day. That is to let you know. Do you know how many forces can contravene what Jesus said, or what the prophet said? For example, Isaiah prophesied 
800 years before that a virgin will give birth. I mean, is it not stupidity for a man to wake up and say a virgin will give birth? Virgins don't give birth. It is against biological law. But he said it by inspiration. And then 800 years later, a virgin suddenly becomes pregnant. And those who were close knew that she didn't know a man. And you say, okay, maybe they manipulated that. The Bible still captures that this child that will be born will be taken to Egypt. And this boy was eight years old. Herod came of all places. It's Egypt they went to. When Herod died, they came back. Of all places that Jesus can live, it is where the Bible says he will live in the land of Zebulun, by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles. And he came and found a house where it was captured. These are prophecies given before he was born. You say, okay, maybe he studied it. That's why he did it. How about the Roman soldiers? That the Bible prophesied that they will pierce him on the side. Did they cooperate with the soldiers who killed him? And the soldiers wanted to pierce him. Of all places, it was the side they pierced. Even his garment that was captured, that they will do a lot with it. The same soldiers, as if something was manipulating them, they carried the garment and they cast lot with it. What level of precision is that? Even the prophecies about nations have all come to pass. Does it not suggest to you that what is in this book is beyond human intelligence? There's a spirit manipulating it. So prophecies come to prove that scriptures were inspired. It's beyond human intelligence. Number four proof of the revelation of scripture are the miracles that happen at the instance of scripture. Everything the Bible says to do to see miracles, do it to see miracles. And when you quote the scriptures themselves, they produce miracles. They are not words of men. He said, this sign, if you follow them that believe, in my name they shall cast out devils. We now go, we say, what's the name? They say, it's Jesus. And we call that name and demons are responding. Who told the demons to respond? And then you don't even need anybody to come around. You carry the scripture. The scripture say, by his stripes you are healed. You now quote it and believe it. And cancer leaves your body. Who educated the cancer? To let you know what you are dealing with is spiritual. So the fourth proof of the revelation, of the inspiration of scripture are the miracle working power that the scripture produces. The fifth proof is the power of scripture to engender transformation. Look at yourself. Some of you looking at me here were scammers. <laughs> My God, you scam 20 people in two weeks. All of a sudden, the scriptures hit your heart and you lost the desire to scam. Some of you listening to me here were drunks. You see Gouda, immediately you start salivating. Gouda, Gouda, Gouda. Some of you is pan wine. In the evening, ah, you go and sit at that joint and they give you pan wine. When you take two cups, you do like this. All of a sudden, this same scripture entered you and the appetite died. You, they drunk. What happened? There is power to transform. To let you know they are not words of men. So they transformed. It was inspired by God. And finally, the proof that scriptures are inspired, it is uncommon consistency. Over 40 writers spanning over 1,500 years, living across the sea. You never hear any messianic prophet contradict themselves. It's the same thing Isaiah was saying, that Micah was saying, and all of them speaking with the same consistency. And then the New Testament ones showed up and they were replicating it. People of different race, different generations, spanning across different times. Yet, same message so you know that this book the one who gave it is older than time so what he was saying 1000 years ago is the same with what he's saying now that's why it will be very consistent like that these are the proofs of inspiration and it's the first thing you need to understand 
as far as the doctrine of scripture is concerned. That scriptures are inspired. You know how they were inspired through revelation, illumination, and inspiration. And then you have proofs that they were inspired. Second thing about biblical interpretation. I'll round up in 10 minutes. So write. Let your heart be choked with the word of God this night. Choke yourself. Elohim Adonai. Those of you, those of you who love movies, today we will choke you with word. If you are watching movie, seven hours, you say, Kai, is this the last episode? Why did they finish this movie like this now? It didn't finish where? Ah, but they, they, at least he should have married again now. At least they should have killed the boss. No boss will die. No girl will be married. Hear the word of God. He says, search ye out of the book of the law and read. None of these things shall fail. The mouth of the Lord that has spoken it, his spirit has gathered it. This book was inspired. Have you been touched by the message you just heard and you want to give your life to Jesus or you want to rededicate your life to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Then say this short prayer. Lord, I admit I am a sinner. I need and want your forgiveness. I accept your death as the penalty for my sin and recognize that your mercy and grace is a gift you offer to me because of your great love, not based on anything I have done. Cleanse me and make me your child. Be faithy receive you into my heart as the Son of God and as Savior and Lord of my life. From now on, help me live for you, with you in control. In your precious name, Amen. Congratulations to you. If you have just said that prayer, you are now a child of God. Look around you for a Bible-believing church and also ask Jesus to direct you to the church where you can continue to serve Him. Consider subscribing to this channel too, so that you'll keep learning the realities of God's kingdom. God bless you.